All right, everyone, welcome back. I got a, I got finally, I finally hit the dreaded, the dreaded time where I got, basically, I got nailed. Specialty. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, okay. Um, so I got nailed. Here's my, here's the. Here it is right here. Let me try to zoom in here and uh, show you. Here you go. There it is, right there. There's the nail. Uh, I don't know how long it is, but I'm about to find out. So let's zoom out. All right, uh, so here's my setup. I don't have a bike stand and all that other stuff. I just took, I simply just took uh, the bike pushed it up against the wall to keep the front wheel straight. And right here, I just have a basically a floor jack. And I have it just enough, just right under here. Right under here. And here's the, the wire so it's not, it's safe, so it's not being touched. And I'm um, actually going to have to disconnect this. I have the rear rack, the front rack. Taking it all off is such a hassle. So I'm going to do my best to uh, just do it, do it like this. Let's first try to get the wheel off here. Cut the zip tie off. I think there's a Velcro here. Is this attached by some Velcro? Seems like it's attached by Velcro. Let's take this off a little bit so I can see things a little bit better. And yeah, there you go. You can. Kind of see right here that there is something here. Just enough to cut the wire. There we go. I don't want to take the whole thing off uh, because I just need to take I just need to take this off right here. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it like this. Give me some leverage. It is turning. So you don't have to, you know, some, you could use your brute strength if you wanted to. I'm not going to stop you, but, you know, if you go ahead and use your brain, you might actually uh, accomplish this with relatively ease. starting to get really easier. Is it getting easier enough to uh, do by hand? Okay, it is. Okay, oh, look at that. It's already dropping out. Let the gravity just take hold. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now. Let's see, yeah, turn it this way. There you go, it's turning. It's turning. That side's already dropping. Okay, I'm gonna take this off for sure. Gotta take this off and then... Next is this torque arm. Smaller the uh, bolt or screw, not too much torque. So when you tighten it, remember not to over torque it because you can strip these. You can definitely strip them. There we go. All right, so that's that's out. Put that magnetic tool holder. Most likely it's gonna come out. If not, I could use the mallet. This one's already dropping out. Oh, look at that. It just, it just fell out just like that. I should have moved the derailleur to the lowest gear all the way to the seventh gear. This sucks, but I should have changed that derailleur setting beforehand before doing this, but now I'm going to lift the bike up. 
I'm going to try to raise this here. So, uh, wish me luck, everyone. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's shifting. I wanted to get to the smallest cog. Okay. Oh, so, there we go. It's coming out. It's coming out. Voila. Oh, okay. So I know what I what I needed to do. All right. Uh, it it helps to be on the smallest derailleur. There we go. It would have been easier if I put it on the uh, seventh gear to begin with, and it would have rolled out just fine. Anyways, here is. Let's take a look at that nail. There's the the nail right there. I can see green slime already right here. Let's remove that nail. So there's the nail. Let's see if I could just pull it out. Let's see how long this nail. <laughs> wow. That's that's what it looks like, people. That's the nail that went into my tire. Wow. And uh, there's the hole. Okay. This is going to be interesting to see the damage. It's already, air is already out. Let me pop one side open. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that green slime all over the place. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, that is a beautiful sight, ain't it? Green slime. All right, let's uh, let's find that hole. See fibers. Here it is. I wonder if it, it poked through somewhere else. That's what I'm afraid of. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and just replace it. And it probably poked through the other side. I got an inner tube. I got some spare inner tubes. I think it's safer to uh, assume that it probably made several punctures. And uh, it's probably best uh, to replace the inner tube. Green slime in here, but I know it's going to just leak out. There you go. I knew this would come in handy, and sure enough, I was uh, I was right. It did come in handy. So here's my new inner tube from uh, what is it by Mongoose, whoever they are. Let's go tear into it. This big nail right here probably uh, did more damage than that little than that hole. May have punctured some other ones that I I don't see, but I don't know. Uh, here's what it looks like. Now, not expecting any problems or any issues whatsoever with this. One of the things I want to do is uh, let's make sure it's about the same size. Yeah, it looks about the same size. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, a lot faster. No. Give it some shape. There we go. Okay, that's good enough. So now let me see here. That looks okay. That looks about right. So now I'll match up the, the valve hole. All right. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna try to stuff it in here. Careful not to get any pinch flats. Just gotta get this to go into the valve hole. Oh. Yeah, there it is. Come on, go in there, little buddy. Okay, it's in there. Let's get this tool and let's just get it on. Oh. Alright. Valve is in. Oh! Oh, there we go. All right, 
I'm, I'm satisfied with it. Well, how about 20 just for now? I'm back in business, everybody. Back in business. Wipe it right here. Wipe this off a little. A lot, actually. Uh, I just have to put it back. Um, all right. Let's give this a try. All right. Now I should have enough clearance. And I, sure enough, I do. I have enough clearance. I have enough clearance to roll it in there. Kind of. What I'm trying to do now is just to get the chain back on here. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. I've I've managed to get the chain on the seventh gear. I've gotten this far. Okay. Now I'm gonna just lower it back down. Let's see if this works. Yeah, I'm probably doing it the hard way too. Let me see. Which way do I want this nut to go? And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go over some things that might help you do this a lot faster. Now, my opinion, okay, my opinion, if you knew what you're doing and you turned the bike upside down like most people do, uh, it would probably take you 20 minutes to do. Uh, if you didn't know what you're doing, even though you turn the bike upside down, it would probably take you about uh, 40, 45 minutes to an hour if you didn't know what you were doing and you didn't have quite the proper tools. Now, if you did it the way I did it, it would probably take you half an hour. But, you know, if you have, if you have a, the rack in the back and the basket and the, and the front, that will take you, you know, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. I don't know. But, you know, just taking it off and then putting it back on. That's why I chose to not flip it upside down and do it standing up like I did. Standing up the way I did it, if you didn't know what you're doing, uh, I'll let you know it took me two hours to get this done. That's because I'm filming, I'm doing things, I'm going back and forth on tools. If you knew what you were doing and you knew the tools that you needed to do and you knew how to take the wheel off and everything, how everything goes back together and takes how you take it apart, it would literally take you probably half an hour. Using the um, the jack stand to lift the rear tire up, the rear frame, the whole the, the rear frame of the whole bike up, that was very useful. That was very useful. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make a note of, uh, another thing I did was I loosened the brake pads. Uh, so uh, to get the rear the rear uh, disc brakes into the uh, into the caliper, I loosen the uh, uh, the distance between the two brake pads. So I open up as wide as wide as I can, and it just simply it's it's real easy just to slip in there. That's if you're doing it the way I did it. But uh, this is number I don't know if number ten. I guess number ten is in here. So your your tool kit comes with the number ten, and does it does it slide? Gosh, for some reason it doesn't slide really well for number ten. Uh, it's not great, but this seemed to slide really well for a number ten. Anyways, Harbor Freight tools not that bad compared to these kind of tools that you get. So um, yeah, I guess it does slip in. Kind of rough though, really, gosh, really rough for some reason. Anyways, uh, number 10, and 
what this does is uh, once you get this once you get the wheel on sometimes uh, the way you have it set in now if you had this upside down you could just turn the wheel since I didn't have it upside down this was sideways and that's one of the reasons why it wasn't going in okay and so you could take you take this and then you turn it until it goes in and there's that torque washer right here and there's a bracket so if you look here I'm gonna try to go upside down here you see that okay you should be able to see this right here see that little piece that that piece is part of the torque washer right here that little metal piece that goes on the bottom so you have to turn this so you're gonna to have to turn this to slip it in and also remember to get the torque washer okay this washer right here get this metal piece to be on the bottom and uh, that's also true that's also true for this as well there's a torque washer here and that also has that little metal piece on the bottom so when you when you put it in when you put it in there uh, you have to make sure that that piece is that piece is uh, it's hard to see here since I have the the derailleurs on but make sure that that torque washer is on the bottom as well and so that's that's it that's the only thing I got left I haven't turned it on yet putting the wheel on with the derailleur uh, with the bike standing up is possible I did it okay it's a uh, kind of tricky but it, it you you can do it so make sure these arrows are pointing and they should just it should just be snapped you should be able to snap it you should be able to just go in with pretty ease yeah there you go all I have to do is uh, put this back on like this put this back on I, I got the weight of the bike on it so I know it's it's in there pretty good and I'm just gonna go ahead and just put the put the nuts and bolts in and that's 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 it I'm probably gonna use the mallet I'm most likely going to use the mallet here to tighten it let me see number 18 yeah, number 18. So I'm just going to use a mallet and just tighten it that way instead of trying to, you know, muscle my way into into doing this. Just keep doing that until it's until I'm satisfied with the torque on it. I think it's 35 newton meters, but whatever. I won't over. I should probably I should probably put it on as as good as I can because uh, you don't want your back wheel to fall off. But there, there's, there's a useful tip for you. Anyways, I'm gonna conclude this episode. I am, I am done. I'm happy. I got it done during the morning. I'm probably not gonna ride the bike. I'm pretty exhausted. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say exhausted. I'll test ride it, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I'll zip tie it, get everything I need to get done. And uh, as far as this. As far as this other piece, I'm probably going to wash it out, and I'm probably going to use that tube to cover this, my Suntour C-Post. This one was too tight, and it bent, it ripped. I think the size of that one, the size of this, will nicely cover this up so it won't get wet, because I will be riding in the rain. Anyways... Anyways, feel free to uh, like, uh, dislike, uh, leave a comment, or even do a video response. Until next time, everyone, stay tuned. Bye.